Good morning. My name is Susan Parks, and a long time ago, I was the first art coordinator at the Creative Discovery Museum, so I'm very excited to be back as an artist in residence. Um, my heart is in the Creative Discovery Museum because I got to see every detail being put together, and it's so exciting to see it carried on today. Now, I know a lot of y'all are a little bit nervous about beginning school, and you've got to set up workspaces at home because you may be at home or you may be at school or you, you know, lots of things. So it reminded me of a time in middle school, which we used to call junior high school, when I decided I wanted to be a teacher a long time ago. So I set up my workspaces like a teacher's room and we wore blue jeans a lot in the 70s. So I made this, uh, sort of a book hanger. It, it hangs on a stick on your wall out of blue jeans and embroidery. I love to embroider. Some of my inspiration pieces, this is a piece that my great aunt got in El Salvador and it's applique. That's the solid pieces like this and then it has stitches all around it and I'm going to show you how to make some of those stitches today. Now here's a piece that's totally different. It looks totally different, but what's a like about the two pieces is that they both have some of the same kind of stitches. Even though this is from China and that's from El Salvador, they both have many same stitches. And I have those same piece, stitches in my piece. Um, behind me are a bunch of blouses from Chiapas, Mexico. I have a friend that runs a place called Islet Style out of Ringgold, so you can get these blouses in Chattanooga. And they have every kind of embroidery and they're all hand done and they're beautiful. Um, today, I wanna to show you a couple of options on how to do your stitches because you don't have a pattern for this. You can actually draw it on. This pen is erasable. Um, you can either, some pins you can iron off and some pins you can mist off with a little spray bottle or you can just leave it on there. And I do advise that everybody make a sampler at first. Now, uh, one other way you can do it is you can draw with a indelible pen. That means a pen that won't bleed in an outline or whatever and paint it with watercolor and then embroider over the watercolor and that kind of fills it out. You can also embroider with ribbons. Cotton is very good, so I use this floss and it comes in many colors. You need a little pair of scissors and you need needles. Now, if you're very young, you don't want a real, real, real sharp needle because you might poke yourself. But um, after you take a few stitches, you'll learn not to poke yourself. These are embroidery needles and they come in a package of different sizes. And these are multi-purpose needles that have embroidery needles in them. You don't have to use an embroidery needle. Use whatever needle you like that feels good in your hand. And what you're going to do is you're going to take thread like this. And there are six strands of floss in a piece of thread. And you can, you can either use all six strands if you want it kind of thick or you can peel off two strands and make it very fine like in this embroidery. Um, I'm using six strands for my sampler and um, I'm gonna start out with the four that I think even a small child could do with a little bit bigger needle and you could even use yarn to begin with. I'm using cotton cloth because I like the feel of that. So you're gonna go in and out. Or another way you can do it is you can go under and pick it up with your other hand from underneath and you kind of have to feel for the line so that you get it in the right place. Just kind of run your needle over the back. And this is called a running stitch. And there's a lot of people that say you shouldn't make knots in your embroidery because they'll make it lumpy. Particularly in the Chinese embroidery, they use no knots. Um, I'm not a purist about that. I think it's okay to have a little knot when you start. 
and when you end <clears throat> on the back <clears throat> you can just take a little stitch like that and come through like that and snip it off because the back is not going to show um <clears throat> The next stitch is called a back stitch. And you take your thread and you can start out with one stitch and then you go under and you go up, leaving a little space and then you go back. And you go back in the hole that you came out of. So that's a back stitch. And there's many books on this. There's many videos on this. Um, today, I do want to show you the stitches, but I also want to inspire you with some designs. A lot of embroideries are based on nature, um, but you can embroider anything. You can embroider spaceships. You can embroider anything you're interested in. I was interested in the earth. You can do a whole embroidery with just three or four stitches. So don't be sad if you don't learn all the stitches. I would say learn a stitch you really like and do it often and do it a lot. And you'll get good at that one, then you can master another one. I do advise that you make a sampler because um, it's, it's a good reference. If you forget something, you'll always have the sampler. Another tip is when you're through embroidering for the night, take it off because the, the hoop will make a memory on your piece and you don't want to leave it in overnight for a long period of time. And you can always put the hoop on the next day if you weren't finished. So what I would suggest, you can also applique if you don't have a sewing machine, you can turn your edges under like that and just make a stitch like that to hold the piece on there and then embroider over it for decoration and to make it secure. Um, this little piece is just using two strands and it's satin stitch, chain stitch. Um, you can even take a drawing that you've already done and draw it onto your material and embroider a drawing you really like. Um, I hope you can get your home space organized in a way that's gonna work for you. And um, I love using shirts on pockets. You can take pockets off old shirts, um, things like that. I hope you have a good school year. And um, I look forward to seeing sometime your creations. It's been very nice having this little meeting today and I hope that um, you all are a little bit inspired as I was as a child. You can do it. You can do anything you want with art and I hope you enjoy this. Thank you.